Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, playing some more Super Mario Odyssey while permanently crouching. In the last video, we wrapped up all of the moons in the moon. <laughs> uh, we got every moon from the Moon Rock and Honey Loon Ridge. Some of them were very hard. We had to use two-player mode for the 2D moons. Uh, but we managed to get all of them, so that's good. Um, and we're ready to take on Peach's Castle. Uh, we haven't done anything here yet. There are two moons here we've already got. Uh, we got the secret path, uh, which is from, um, whatchamacallit, <laughs> uh, which is in, um, which is in Mount Walbono. Uh, and we got that one already. We also did the hint art here, uh, because I had to go into the castle to activate the peach cutscenes throughout the kingdom, so I read the hint art while I was there and collected it already. So we have those two. Uh, there's 43 regular moons to get. But there's also a bunch of other moons to be collected here, which will appear in our moon list once we talk to Toadette, who is inside the castle. Uh, but before we do any of that, we're going to go over here, because there's a painting on the ground, which we can go into. Uh, this painting is the last um, remaining secret path that we haven't done. This one leads to Shavaria, I think. I believe this can also lead to Bubbleland, depending on the order you choose them in. Uh, but in this game, th this, in this game playthrough, it goes to Shavaria. Uh, as you can see, it leads to this moon on here, up on the clifftop. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Uh, I believe I already mentioned earlier that it is possible to get up here from down there with a really precise jump. Uh, but I can't pull it off, and I didn't really want to, so we did it this way instead. Uh, anyway, with that, Shavaria is now 100% complete. Uh, so that's another kingdom under our belt, and we're just going to make our way back to the castle now, and continue from there. Uh, so, basically, uh, Peach's Castle in this game is one gigantic reference to Super Mario 64, which makes sense, because this game's kind of a spiritual sequel to that game. Uh, if you look at the coins, you can see that's the exact design that the coins had in that game. Uh, and if you look at the map, you can see it actually says currency 64-esque, which is really cute. Uh, there's a hundred of them in this kingdom, so we're going to try to get all of them. Uh, there's a lot to do here. Uh, boing. Uh, here you can see this, uh, this tree here from Super Mario 3D Land. This is the one that the Super Leaves came from. You can see the tail is sparkling, and you can see if you talk to uh, this friend here, with cyclical soaking, the tree will develop 1.25% more efficiently. I think this is a hint to the fact that if we spin Cappy around on the tail, Cappy, we get a moon. Well, a star, we get a moon. Uh, because, you know, cyclical, and it's standing right there. Uh, anyway, we get this moon. And yeah, when you get a moon in this kingdom, it plays the tune from Mario 64 instead of the tune uh, from this game, which is pretty charming in my opinion. Uh, there's a bunch of checkpoints around. This area is not too big, so the checkpoints aren't that important. It's not hard to navigate around. Uh, there are two uh, races to do. They're both unlocked because there's no moon rock. Um, we will make our way over here, get these purple coins off Dory's back. Uh, there we go. Oh, there's some more down there. I'm not really sure what order I'm doing this in. I'm just basically wandering around and doing stuff as I think of it. Uh, there is, as I said, quite a bit of stuff to be done here. So we will be here a while. Uh, some of it is also very difficult. And I'm a little worried about certain parts of it. Uh, I probably will be using my Peach Amiibo for certain bits in order to get extra health. Uh... So, um, keep that in mind. <laughs> uh, so, if we go over to the castle, which we're going to do now, you can see the design. It's, it's fairly similar to how it looked in um, Mario 64. They've, they've refined it a bit. Uh, the moat's still here, but these turrets and things are above the moat instead of, like, in it. Uh, you can drain the moat like in 64, and there's a reward for doing so. We won't do it just yet, though. Uh, we can see that Peach and Tiara are up there on the balcony. Uh, we do want to go up there, so we will be going up there in a second. Uh, first, we're going to go inside, though. So, inside, you hear a familiar tune, because this game is lovely. Uh, 
Oh, yeah. That, that, that just occurred to me. Can we just look up like this? No. Alright, um... If you've played 64, you may know that standing here and looking up is how you enter the wing cap level. We want to do that, but we can't because we can't enter first person mode while crouching. Huh. Maybe if I time it right, I might be able to. Doesn't look like we can. Wow. Okay, well that's something we can't get. <laughs> oh, another impossible moon. That's so sad. Uh, some purple coins here. Uh, there's another moon we can get in here by looking for these weird looking tiles. You can see they look sort of different to all the others. If you ground pound these tiles, it'll give you a little number and pop up, an pop up another tile. Uh, we want to get all eight of these. Uh, a lot of things in this kingdom use eights instead of like fours or threes. I believe that's a reference to the eight red coins feature of Mario 64 that every kingdom had, or well, of course had, there weren't kingdoms in that game. Uh, but basically we want to keep looking for the weird looking tiles. Uh, a new one pops up when we when we ground pound one of them, and when we've done all eight, we'll get a moon. Uh, so... It is so sad that there's another impossible moon. We're, we're at six now. I honestly thought that it would be three, but it's twice that already. Uh, uh, okay, there's the loose tile. It can be a little tricky to find the loose tiles we're looking for. Um, especially the darker ones. They don't look quite as different from the other tiles with the shininess. Yeah, I have trouble spotting them. <laughs> I've had trouble with this in every run. It's just annoying to spot which tiles they are. It's nothing to do with the crouching, really. Oh, there it is. So that's five. Uh, you can see Toadette wants to talk to us. We will be talking to her in a moment, but first I want to do the loose tile thing. So, we'll get that done and then we'll talk to her. She'll have quite a bit to say, trust me. Uh, seven. And eight. And we get a moon. ba da ba doo ba doo boo Yeah! <laughs> Okay, now we'll talk to Toadette, which we can do while crouching. Uh, this is Archivist Toadette. Uh, an archi archivist? Ar 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 archi I don't know. Uh, she's actually tracked a whole bunch of things we've done through the game, and she gives us moons for doing certain tasks. Uh, so if you look at the power moon list now, we can say that there are uh, 104 moons here rather than 43. So all of these tasks we need to do in order to get all of the moons from Toadette. Uh, we will have already done quite a lot of them, so if we keep talking to her, she will give us a bunch of moons all at once. Uh, Achieve World Peace is for doing the story in every kingdom, which of course we've done at this point. Uh... Power Moon Knight is for getting a certain number of Power Moons. Uh, there's a few more like that. Generally, most people get to just have to talk to Toadette for a long time when they get to this part of the game, because you've usually done quite a bit of stuff by the time you reach this. Uh, but for us, it's especially annoying because we waited till the end of the game to come here and do this bit. But yeah, you get the idea. She gives you lots of stuff. Uh, flat Moons are the ones in 2D sections. So it's kind of exciting that we can even get the Flat Moon rewards, because otherwise I thought they were impossible. <laughs> uh, treasure Chest Hunter, so that's moons that are in treasure chests, which seems kind of arbitrary, because some moons are in chests and there's not really any reason for it, but, you know, whatever. Uh, I'm forgetting more treasure chests. Uh, note collecting, so, um, ones that involve collecting notes, obviously. 
Uh, which I think is a good thing to do because the note ones are often quite tricky. Uh, world tour and then space tour for doing more of them. Pretty simple. Uh, we just keep talking to Toadette. Timer challenges. Uh, I believe there's two or three moons for that. So as you can see, you just sort of st talk to her for a while here. It's a little annoying. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Captain Toad meter. So for talking to Captain Toad in different kingdoms, you get this one. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah. <laughs> ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cheering with Princess Peach. This is for talking to Peach in the different kingdoms and getting a moon from her. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah. And a couple more for doing that. There we go. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah. Uh, that's for the Gaga for Goombet. That's for finding Goombet and showing her a Goomba so that she falls in love in various kingdoms. The Kitty Fishing Trip, obviously for doing the fishing ones throughout the game. Uh, flower Growing. I'm not sure about that one. Oh, I think it's for the ones where you plant the seeds in the little pots and then they grow into power into moons. While going sage. Running with rabbits for catching the rabbits. So yeah, you just talk to group to um Toadad here for a while, racing with rabbits, same basic thing. Ground Pound Instructor. So that's moons you can dig up by ground pounding in different spots, like the hint art moons and various other stuff. I don't know if the hint art counts, actually. It might be the other ones. The ones where you have to sense a rumble or look at a sparkle on the ground. Rad Hatter. That's for buying a certain amount of hats in the game. Super Red Hatter. Traveling birds. So yeah, the ones with the birds flying around, you throw your hat at them. Rowing it well. That's for buying outfits for Mario to wear. Wearing it great, same thing. Wearing it perfect, same thing. Hat seeking missile, that's for finding hat and seek moons throughout the game. Art Enthusiast, that's for doing hint art. Slots Machine, for doing the slots throughout the game. Cooper Free Running MVP, for doing a lot of free running things. Hall of Famer, that's for doing all of them, I think. So I forget what that one is. <laughs> I'll check the moon list to see what that one's about, because I can't remember what that one is. Quizmaster, that's for doing the Sphinx's quizzes. Souvenir Sampler. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Ba -da -ba -da. That's for buying souvenirs with purple coins. Uh, so is this one. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Ba -da -ba -da. Capturing Novice. So that's for capturing, I think, just one thing or something. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. 
Para para. And this one's for capturing more stuff. Para 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 pa. Para para. I kind of wish you'd just give you all these in one go, instead of... Ah, uh, that's for buying a lot of hats. Fashion Mave. Oh, super... I remember what that other one is. I'll tell you, tell you in a bit. Uh, this, is for, this is for getting outfits. Moonrock Liberator, that's for opening the moon rocks. Checkpoint flagger, that's for, like, getting all the checkpoints, basically. Uh, that's for getting more of the checkpoints. <laughs> Loaded with coins, that's for collecting lots and lots of coins. Rolling in coins for getting more coins. <sighs> so, yeah, there's a lot of this to do. Swimming coins. Oh my goodness. Jump, jump, jump. That's for just jumping a lot. Uh, I think 10,000 jumps is the amount you need to get the moon. Fly Cappy Fly is for throwing Cappy. Uh, I think it might be 10,000 for that one too. We can check in a moment. And that's everything, finally. So if you look at the list now, uh, you can see that there's actually counters here. So you have to jump 10,000 times. We've jumped 27,560 times by the time we got here. Uh, you can see... Oh, actually I need to go back and use one of those warp holes in order to get that. Okay. Did not realise that you actually had to use all of them to get that. Okay. Uh, we need to buy some more outfits, we need to buy some more hats. Uh, we need to buy some more souvenirs. We need, to, we need to do some more hint art. Um, this one you can't actually do without going to the post-game areas. Uh, there's not enough hint art in the regular game. You have to go to the post-game to get some more hint art there. Uh, so that one we can't do for a while. Uh, Music Maestro, we can do that one in this kingdom. We just have to talk to Jam and Toad again. That's easy. Uh, Master Sheep Herder. Yeah, there's a, another sheep herding moon in this in this kingdom, uh, so which we'll, we'll be doing that, and then we can get this moon as well. Uh, regional coin shopper, I think we just have to buy a couple more things. Regional coins, yeah, easy. Uh, so the short, supernaturally sure-footed one, that's for uh, trace walking, I think. Yeah, trace walking. Okay. Um, so yeah, we'll have to go back to that warp and go through it, so that I, we get it counted on our list of warp holes we've done, even though we didn't need to do it. Uh, and yeah, this jump counter is kind of important for some runs, because this is how you decide if, it, if a run is jumpless or not. If you get to the end of the game, you talk to Toadette, this gets added to your moon list. If the counter says 0 out of 10,000, you've done a jumpless run. It's really hard. Uh, some things that don't count as jumps though, um, which is really helpful. Wall kicks aren't jumps. Uh, throwing Cappy and then jump, like, bouncing off of her when she's on the ground isn't a jump either. Um, swimming in water usually isn't isn't counted as a jump. If jumping out of water is a jump, though. Uh, so, yeah, there's a bunch of other ways to do things without incrementing the jump counter. One problem, though, is that talking to people, which uses the same button as jumping, A or B or whatever, counts as a jump. So, you have to be really careful about that. <laughs> uh, throwing Cappy, we've done it, yeah, I need to do it 5,000 times, we've done it way more than that. Uh, so yeah, to get World War, but we'll have to go back to Bowsette's Castle and go through that painting, uh, just so that it gets counted on the list. Uh, these others will be fine, we'll do, we'll do that later. Um, so that's all we can do in here, we can say, see that this, this cutie here is saying, hi there Cappy. Uh, I appreciate your enthusiasm for my favourite hat lady. I, I love her very much. Okay, so Tiara and Peach are up on that balcony. We're going to go talk to them next, uh, now that we've finally gotten that other bit over with. Pretty easy to get up there, just like that. Aww. This is really cute. 
Look at those cuties. A souvenir. Thanks, Peach. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da Thanks, Peach. So yeah, um, you can only get that moon if you talk to Peach in every kingdom. Uh, the other ones you can actually do in any order, but she only shows up here again once you've done all of them. Uh, also, the way you're supposed to get on the roof is by using that scarecrow, uh, which makes a staircase here, but I thought it'd be much easier to jump up with Cappy rather than try to do it without Cappy. Um, so yet another similarity between this kingdom and Mario 64, for those who have climbed onto the roof of the castle in Mario 64, is that a certain friend is on the rooftop. It's Yoshi! Yoshi is in this game. <laughs> uh, like in Mario 64, you cannot ride Yoshi. Uh, you just bop him on the head. But unlike Mario 64, our hat lets us control other critters. So if we throw our hat at Yoshi, we become Yoshi. <laughs> uh, which... It's great, we can flutter jump. Uh, we also have an interesting mechanic here. You can use your tongue uh, to grab onto walls and like pull yourself up. Uh, it's an interesting trick. It's kind of kind of a wall jump, kind of a kind of a vaulty sort of climbing move. It's it's very interesting. Um, it's not much is done with it in this kingdom, uh, but. Uh, there, there are some uses of Yoshi later on in the game as well, and I think it, I think, I think, I think their moves get used quite well throughout the areas of the game they show up in, which isn't that many. Uh, Yoshi can also eat fruit. There's fruit over here, so we're gonna get some. Uh, the reason to eat fruit is it will fill up Yoshi's fruit bar. There we go. Uh, see that little fruit bar there? We want to fill that all the way up, because when we do, we get a power moon. Uh, pretty simple. <laughs> uh, there's also a moon over here, which you may have noticed, just on top of this platform here. Uh, it might be easier to do this without Yoshi. Yeah, I think it might be easier to do that with Mario. Yeah. Ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba! -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Perch on the castle roof, there we go. Uh, you can see there's lots of fruit all over the place. So basically we want to eat all of it with Yoshi. Uh, it's kind of like moon shards in that once you eat a fruit, it stays eaten. Uh, oops. Uh, also, Yoshi can't swim, kind of like in Mario Sunshine. Yoshi will uh, dissolve into vapor or something. So that's kind of tragic. Um... <laughs> Let's get back on the rooftop and fetch another Yoshi. <laughs> there we go. As you can see, it's not hard to get up that way. I did think it was, like, really hard, but now I know it's not, so that's pretty cool. There we go. So, yeah, you have the flutter jump. Uh, oops. Okay, something's wrong with my controls, clearly, because I keep accidentally uncapturing. Mm, no, that feels fine. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so we want to get Yoshi again, and we want to eat all this fruit that's all around the place. Uh, this toad here is really excited to have Yoshi eat these fruits, I believe. Yeah, um, this Yoshi's hinting that, this toad is hinting that Yoshi's somewhere around. Uh, which indeed, Yoshi is somewhere around. They're on the rooftop, uh, and we'll be going up there. And hopefully not accidentally uncapturing them as we climb down and having them fall in the moat and die. There we go. That's more like it. There we go. So yeah, we eat these fruits. Uh, you can just touch the fruit or you can stick your tongue out to eat it. Either way, pretty easy. Uh, if we eat these, you can see Toad is very happy. It's very cute. Um, so you can run around as Yoshi if you want. You get the flutter jump. Uh, you aren't quite as mobile as Mario normally is, so it's a little bit trickier to get around. Uh, but it's, it's not a big deal, and Yoshi's fun to control. Um, one of the more exciting captures in the game, I reckon. I think Yoshi's pretty cool. Uh, those purple coins there, I reckon probably a downward cap throw is the best way to get them. So, let's see if we can manage that without falling off. Yes, we can. <laughs> Oh no! 
<laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Uh, the fruit will stay eaten even if you die, so we don't have to worry about re-eating the fruit we already ate. If you have a look over at those fruits there, you can see they're now ghost fruits. You actually can eat them again. I think you get coins for doing that. Uh, it's kind of pointless. Uh, there's four seeds over here that we can plant in order to get moons, like in the other kingdoms. Uh, you can see there's these four pots. I don't know why you're so proud of it. The plants haven't even... There's no plants. Like, <laughs> I guess the hedges? But, I mean, come on. The hedges. So yeah, there's four seeds around we can plant. Uh, there's also a bunny here that we'll be chasing if we can manage to do that. There we go. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Ba -ba -da -ba -da cool. Uh, some more purple coins. So yeah, there's a hundred purple coins here, and we actually do need some of them. Uh, there's an outfit we can buy in this kingdom, which we will be buying, that we need to access one of the sub areas. Uh, here, if you make those flowers bloom, you just get a moon straight away. Pretty simple. Ba -da -ba -da 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 -da. Ba -da 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 -da. Uh, there's a timer challenge over here. It's easiest to do using a scooter. This kingdom has scooters, like in Nudong City, which is pretty nice because they're fun to control. Uh, where are we doing that just yet, though? Uh, uh, there's a lot of Goombas over here. Uh, you actually do need to capture some of them because uh, Goombet is actually up here. Uh, you can see she's over there. Uh, also, I believe you are scared of Goombas, right? Yeah, so this toad is just like that Bonitor we saw way back at the beginning of the game, who's guarding a power moon and is not afraid of a certain enemy. Uh, so all we got to do is just get that enemy and just scare them off. Uh, because Mario is a cruel person. We probably have all the purple coins we need, but we're going to try to get all 100 of them, so... Oops. I am having some trouble with accidentally crouching today. Um... Okay. I'm accidentally crouching. I'm accidentally ground pounding. I'm intentionally crouching. <laughs> uh, yeah, Goombas can't swim either, so just make your way around here. I think you can probably get up fast using some of the springs and stuff, but we can do it this way. Hello! Oh, what a cutie. Uh, you can do this without getting the Goomba. Uh, there's a way to clip into the wall and then get into this from behind. But I figured I'd just do it the intentional way. Uh, you can see there's some purple coins here. There's also another toad wearing a Mario hat there. Uh, that toad wants us to wear a certain outfit. Uh, if you look at that Mario hat, you can see it's sort of low res. That might give you a hint as to what the outfit is. <laughs> ah. Oh, I ship it. That's cute. Aww. Uh, over here, uh, you can see... So this scarecrow is how you're supposed to get onto the roof. When you throw a cappy at that, you'll get a little staircase. Uh, I might demonstrate it shortly, or I might not. I don't know. See if we can get that other purple coin over here. Hopefully we won't roll off the edge this time. There we go. Uh, here's one of the sheep. There are four, I believe. Maybe six, even. There's quite a few sheep to herd in this situation, which is a bit annoying. Uh, it's not hard in any way. It's just, it's just there's a lot to do. And which is kind of frustrating. Uh, also, here's another one of the seeds. I don't really remember where they are because they don't respawn, so... I only get to do them once per game run. Whoa, whoops. <laughs> Goodbye, sheep. <laughs> that sure happened. <laughs> so yeah, the, the pen you need to herd them into is just over here. You can see there's a toad wearing a uh, sheep herd's hat, I guess. Sort of. Um, I'm having a little trouble with that, though. I'll come back to that. Uh, if we come down here, we can see yet another similarity between this game and Mario 64. By going down that pipe at the bottom of the water. 
Now you're ever wondering, where could that pipe lead? We're going to find out shortly. It leads into the castle, in fact. And there's a painting you can jump into. <laughs> Just like in Mario 64. Oh my gosh, I love this game. Same music, same, same like, aesthetic, same painting, and what happens when you jump in? Ba -ba 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 -da -ba. It's so beautiful. So basically, there are six of these paintings. Each of them have a boss rematch. Uh, this one is by far the easiest, uh, because you're fighting this guy, but it's raining, therefore you have infinite water. Which makes it hilariously easy. Um, I took damage just capturing the thing, but I'm not going to have any problems with that, so... I'm not worried at all. Um, every other one, however, is much harder than the original, and I'm a little worried about all of them. Especially... Uh, well, you'll see. <laughs> Don't want to spoil too much. But yeah, because of the rain, you have unlimited water, which makes this hilariously easy, since you don't need to... Oops. Uh, but if you uncapture by accident, you, you will die, so don't, don't do that. Uh, when you die, you get kicked out of the painting, like in Mario 64. This is so charming. So let's do that again, and this time, not mess up. Uh, I've never actually failed this boss fight before. Um, yeah, if you uncapture this Gushin and fall to your doom, you will, you will fail the boss fight, so don't do that. But yeah, um, I guess it's supposed to be harder because there's no water to land on, but you don't need to land. There's no reason to land because you have unlimited water. So, I don't know. I reckon what they probably should have done is give you limited water and require you to use the four fountains around the edges to refill. Uh, because that would be really hard and interesting. Uh, having to, like, dart back there and, like, conserve your water really carefully. Uh, but as it is, it's very easy. And of course, completely unaffected by crouching because we're in a capture for the whole fight. And yeah, this, this fight, this is not hard. Uh, I kind of wish it were a bit harder, but it's, it's easy. See, we've nearly beaten him already. He still only takes three hits. There we go. He right, plays this cutscene again, which is kind of funny. Uh, the one where his head is explodes and you line in the glass. And you get a multi-moon. Uh, you get a multi-moon for all of the boss battles here, which I think is... A little excessive. It makes sense because they're hard, but uh, ba -da -ba. like it's sort of inflating the moon count. If all of these boss rematches also give you a multi moon, I think. Since when you say 880 moons, that's counting each multi moon as three. Um, but yeah, that one's easy. Uh, the other rematches, of which there are five, are much harder. Uh, Uh, and they're basically just scattered around in different spots around the, around the level. So we'll be, we'll be going to all of them eventually. Uh, I'm not sure how many minutes we're going to do in this video. We're at about 30 minutes, so I might want to cash in what we've got now. Um, maybe. <laughs> it almost worked the way I wanted. <laughs> You can actually just bounce off this mushroom to gain the height, like this instead, which is a bit easier. But it's not necessary, you can just use a backflip like I was doing. Uh, here we are back at the Odyssey, so you can see it over there. Uh, I reckon I'll talk to Jam and Toad, maybe? Here's Jam and Toad. Uh, and some friends. Hi Jam and Toad. So here's the last one in the game, Flat and Blocky Classic. Uh, so any 8-bit theme is acceptable here. You can pick whichever one you want. Um, I'm going to go with Mount Volbono because I really like that one. I 
are we still missing? There's still two songs we haven't got. I know what one of them is, but the other one I'm not so sure. Hmm. Did we miss something in New Dong City? I don't think we did. I don't know. But yeah, any 8-bit theme, and you'll just get the moon that way. ba da ba da ba da ba boo da doo da doo do. I forgot to do the right tune. <laughs> okay, uh, you get the 8-bit version of Jump Up Superstar by doing that. Uh, we're still missing one song, though. I wonder what it is. Something to do with the, with the NDC Festival, apparently, but I don't know what it could be. Like, we did the festival, we heard the music from the festival. Hmm. We should have everything at this point. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Maybe there's something later in the game that I forgot about that gives you gives you one. Uh, I'm gonna grab this seed over here. This, uh, actually, yeah, I think I'll make that a video. What about 30, th 36 minutes? Yeah, that's good. I'm gonna cash in all of these many, many moons. There we go. They turn back into moons when you cash them in instead of being stars for some reason. It's weird. Oh my goodness, it takes a while. There we go. So that's 795. <laughs> uh, in the next video, uh, we're going to head back to Bowsette's castle so we can do that warp painting there. Uh, it's not too tricky, we basically just need to hit, hit a checkpoint warp, then walk over there. Uh, it's pretty easy, it won't take us long. You literally live underwater, how is this fountain a wonder of moisture? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, anyway, um, so yeah, um, we're going to be going back to that warp hole in Bowsette's castle, so we can get it checked off on the list of places we've been. Uh, and then we're going to come back here and continue doing stuff here. Um, so, look forward to that. Uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.